Hello, this is Adam Gibson from Learn3dsoftware.com. Uh, I'm here today to tell you about our one of our newest releases, uh, Gozi for Lightwave 11 and ZBrush users. Um, this is the first volume in our series on Gozi for Lightwave 11. Um, basically, what this uh, series is about is uh, how to integrate Lightwave with ZBrush using obviously the, uh, the GoZ system. Um, it's come a long way integration with uh, ZBrush and Lightwave uh, due to the GoZ system, but there still are some hoops and some pitfalls that you can fall into if you don't know certain things. Um, throughout the, uh, the video, which is approximately uh, almost five hours of training. Uh, we go through a lot of the issues and workarounds for different situations that can arise. Um, if you go down here, we're actually on our website right now uh, for the video. Um, we just have a brief description and uh, you can see through the, the table of contents here, the chapter two and three, um, we pretty much talk about uh, uh, how, 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 where the uh, you know where the menu is located, how how the Gozi system works, and uh, how to best optimize your meshes to get the the best uh, results possible for your normal color and displacement maps. Um, if you don't have these things uh, set up correctly, um, when you bring your ZBrushed objects back into Lightwave, things won't come out right. So. There's a, a fair bit of discussion on how to, uh, like I said, optimize your meshes to alleviate any problems or uh, issues on the other end. Um, basically, uh, we discuss a few other things like uh, those of you who have followed uh, Lightwave and ZBrush integration, we discuss uh, the morph target issue, um, reasons why you use a morph target, um, when you don't have to use a morph target. Uh, we also discuss the, uh, with regards to uh, things like uh, sub-patch levels. Uh, this way when we're in layout and we're doing, we're setting up our render settings, we have to set uh, things in our object properties so that we get the best uh, possible uh, and accurate displacement maps. Once again, uh, the point is, is that uh, you need what you did in ZBrush, you want it to come back out in Lightwave and look, you know, identical or as close as humanly possible to what it looked like in ZBrush. So that's that's the whole point of it. So um, so we show how to how to fix certain situations that can arise if you don't have your sub patch settings uh, set correctly or your render sub patch levels uh, set up correctly. Um, we discuss the uh, the cache folder, which is where uh, Gozi um, basically stores uh, your image map information when it transfers the, uh, the objects back and forth from uh, Lightwave to ZBrush and ZBrush back to Lightwave. We discuss uh, sometimes uh, things like uh, some normal normal maps and data transfer issues. Um, we show individually how to create individually how to create normal maps, individually how to create color maps, individually how to create displacement maps. Uh, and then we go into discussing how to generate multiple maps, like all the maps at the same time, generating your color, your normal, and your displacement map all at once and spitting it back out with all the appropriate nodes set up in layout. Um, there, are, there are also some aspects for multi-layered objects. So if you've modeled something in in modeler and you have multiple layers and they're all individual objects with their own separate UV maps um, how to get that into ZBrush unfortunately um, the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that uh, the GoZ for Lightwave unfortunately is not as advanced as the GoZ for um, Maya th uh, 3D Max uh, in Modo, uh, you can bring multi-layered and multi-sub-tooled objects back and forth between those programs. Unfortunately, with Lightwave, we're, we are only able to 
do one layer at a time and I show the, the workarounds and how to deal with with that as well um, and we also discuss uh, the package scene option so that way if you have files scattered all across your hard drive that you know image maps and models and that type of thing how you can package them all up into one nice neat little folder and then you can zip it up or rar it up and send it uh, you know to another studio or another coworker, or you know just for basic organizational or general organizational purposes um, I show how to once again um, how to import multiple layers as subtools. Uh, I show how to append a, a subtool, especially if you're new to uh, to ZBrush. Then a very, very important issue we discuss at the very end of the uh, of the uh, training, we discuss uh, mesh density, low poly versus high poly meshes. Um, where you would use a high a low poly mesh and versus a high poly mesh uh, and how that relates back to that morph uh, target issue, retaining, being able to con uh, keep the original volume of the actual mesh. And there are some issues involved. If you don't have enough polys in your object, um, you'll have some problems going back and forth, and that directly relates to the morph, uh, morph target issue when we're dealing with sub-D objects. So... Uh, so anyways, that's pretty much uh, just a description of what, what's going to be going on in this uh, training video. If you do a lot of uh, extensive uh, modeling and, and character work where you're, you're doing a lot of texturing and things like that and you, you want to use ZBrush in your pipeline, uh, this is a good place to start. It'll show you, like I said, once again, all those hoops and pitfalls that you uh, either want to avoid or how you have to deal with them. Um, so very simply, if you're interested, um, you can quickly just click the buy now button and, um, and you can be hooked up through PayPal or credit card to, uh, to purchase the item. Um, now this is more of a, a tool based, uh, video and descri describing the GoZ system because there was a fair amount of uh, issues to cover. Um, if you're looking for more of a project uh, based uh, Lightwave and uh, ZBrush integration video. We also have um, we have this series right here um, on the Velociraptor, and uh, and we show uh, displacement maps, normal maps, painting with color, but it doesn't use the GoZ system. So it shows it also like it shows like you know some sculpting techniques and just to give you some ideas and how to use alpha brushes that type of thing. It shows how to manually set up the displacement node in the normal map node. Um, it sh this is, like I said, pre-ZBrush, um, sorry, pre-GoZ -Go method. But it's also good to understand how to set this stuff up manually in case for some reason you're having a problem with your GoZ system or how you can, like I said, once again, fix something if it goes wrong, understand how it uh, how things work so but uh, but anyways that is all for now and uh, we will be seeing you again soon this is Adam Gibson from learn3dsoftware.com